Good morning and welcome to the Terran Space Academy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We also have merchandise now. There is a link in the description. We would like to thank Top Secret and the Green Rabbit Rabbit for bringing something to our attention. These astute scholars noted something about our calculation on the last lesson. They had the audacity to claim in the discussion comments that I had made an error somewhere. I double-checked, and the explanation of the equation is spot on, and the math itself is correct, and I was ready to be very proud of myself. But when I checked here, it was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. I had transposed these two digits. The propellant mass of the super heavy booster is not 4,300,000 kilograms. It is 3,400,000 kilograms. Sometimes I think I might be less dixic. That leaves a final mass of 1,600,000 kilograms instead of 700,000 kilograms. When we put the corrected numbers into the equation, we get the true delta V of the starship system, after propellant burn and before staging. This is 3.69. We'll look at this again in a minute. I burned an extra 900 tons of propellant mass that did not exist. I should have spotted that the delta V I had was too high for a first stage. The job of a first stage is to give the rest of the rocket a head start getting into space. A first stage will not have a high delta V, as it has a high final mass because it is carrying the second stage up. Let's take a look at the entire starship system and consider something we often hear discussed, but have not seen analyzed. We will start with the Super Heavy Booster by itself to clear up any ambiguities. The SpaceX Super Heavy Booster has a dry mass of 180 tons and a propellant mass of 3,400 tons, giving it a gross mass of 3,580 tons. Now we break out the rocket equation, and I use a spreadsheet so I don't transpose anything as easily. We see the propellant mass is 3,400 tons, the dry mass is 180 tons, and when we add these we get 3,580 tons. We take the specific impulse at sea level, 330 seconds, and multiply by 9.81 meters per second squared to get the ejection velocity, and put these into our rocket equation. Delta V equals the ejection velocity times the natural log of the initial mass over the final mass. The initial mass is 3580, the empty or dry mass is 180. That ratio is 19.89. The natural log of 19.89 is 2.99. Multiply 2.99 times the ejection velocity, and we get 9,680 meters per second, or 9.68 kilometers per second delta V. We see that the booster, by itself, with no second stage at all, could get into orbit. It could in fact be a single stage to orbit ship. And it turns out that we could add up to 16.5 tons, giving a total final mass of 196.5 tons and still just make it. Or that could all be fuel to come back and land. We don't know how many tons Super Heavy will need to land, but I'm pretty sure it will be more than 16.5. If it ever goes into orbit, it's probably doomed. It depends on the terminal velocity and that depends on many factors. Now let's look at the full booster and Starship. If we take the full mass of the Super Heavy booster and add the full mass of the Starship second stage with the maximum payload of 100 tons, we get 5,000 tons total. We have a sea level specific impulse of 330 seconds, giving us an ejection velocity again of 3,237 meters per second. If we burn all the propellant mass of 3,400 tons in the Super Heavy booster, we get 1,600 tons left before stage separation. Now we go to our rocket equation again. We put our initial mass over final mass, that's 5,000 over 1,600 for a ratio of 3.13. The natural log of 3.13 is 1.14. 1.14 times the ejection velocity gets us a delta V of 3.69. But that's if we don't save any propellant to land. Let's say we need 100 tons of fuel to land the booster. That would have us burning only 3,300 tons instead of 3,400 and give us a final mass of 1,700 tons instead of 1,600. Now we end up with a delta V of 3.49. Then the 180 tons of the empty Super Heavy booster with its 100 tons of landing propellant falls away. That leaves the fully fueled Starship with its payload of 100 tons. After Starship separates itself from the booster, it will fire its engines. The dry mass 
plus propellant mass plus payload gives us 1,420 tons. This is our second stage initial mass. We then subtract the propellant mass that it burns getting to orbit. We don't know how much they save, so let's just look at burning it all. Maybe this is a deep space version of Starship. With a final mass of 220 tons, we put 1,420 over 220 and get a ratio of 6.45. The natural log of 6.45 is 1.86. We multiply that by our ejection velocity. Starship launches from a higher altitude, so our vacuum raptors have a specific impulse of 380 instead of 330 at sea level. And that gives us an ejection velocity of 3,728 meters per second. Multiplied by 1.86 gives us a delta V of 6,952 meters per second, or 6.95 kilometers per second. Add this to the booster delta V of 3.49, and we get 10.44. Plenty to get into orbit. But what if this is not a deep space starship? If we look at my calculations here, we have enough delta V left over to keep about 70 tons of propellant to go back and land if we want to. With our starship, we could launch 100 tons of satellites and go safely back to Earth. Now let's look at the starship by itself. We said that a fully loaded starship had a total mass of 1,420 tons. We see here that the delta V of starship by itself would not get into orbit with a payload. Even without a payload, it would not quite make it. A stripped down starship with no payload and a dry mass of only 85 tons could just make it as a single stage to orbit vehicle. So what can we do with a fully fueled starship? SpaceX has announced that it plans to use starship for point to point transportation. That means that a starship will launch from a remote site or a platform in the ocean, like the ones recently purchased by SpaceX and named Phobos and Deimos. Let's look at taking a boat from the port of Los Angeles out to a small island. We will go up an elevator and board the starship, getting ready to go a very long distance very quickly. Now ICBMs can reach the opposite side of the Earth in 28 minutes, and just like ICBMs, the point-to-point -point starship will be on a ballistic trajectory. A ballistic trajectory is an arc. The formulas to calculate a ballistic trajectory have been known for a long time. And here they are. We could work through these together, but there is a high likelihood that I will transpose some more numbers. We'll use this online ballistic trajectory calculator. Now a Starship with a 100 ton payload and no landing fuel would have a delta V of 6.49 kilometers per second. But we want to do something useful and not crash on landing. So let's add 17 tons of passengers. That's 200 people at an average of 85 kilograms per person with their personal items. That's 187 pounds per person. Most airlines assume 180 pounds per person right now. Adding that to our dry mass of 120 tons gives us 137 tons. We add another 8.5 tons or 50 kilograms per passenger for luggage, bringing us to 145.5 tons. And we add 50 tons of landing propellant. That gives us a final mass of 195.5 tons. This gives us a delta V of 6,651 meters per second, or about 6.65 kilometers per second. There are lots of factors that will influence a Starship point-to-point -point flight. The air density, which is related to temperature, the weather, etc. But we're going to simplify things. If our launch angle were straight up into the air, we'll call that 90 degrees relative to the horizon, it goes to a maximum height and then gravity drag causes it to slow down, stop, and come back down at the same spot it launched from. We could reach a maximum altitude of 2,449 kilometers, but our range is zero. This could be fun and is what Blue Origin does with the New Shepard, but we want to go places. If you launch at an angle relative to the Earth, your ship travels in an arc which is actually an ellipse with a focal point at the Earth's center that is interrupted by the ground. To go into orbit, you would have to make your launch angle zero degrees, after your pitch over maneuver hopefully, and your delta V would have to be 9.4 kilometers per second or more. But our delta V is a lot less than that. We would have to add the booster to get to orbit. With a booster, we could go anywhere on Earth. Without a booster, this system will not be very practical. But if we add the super heavy booster to the Starship, we can get 200 passengers plus 80 tons of cargo 
anywhere on Earth in less than an hour. This would be a very efficient way to get from one continent to another. LA to Tokyo, Beijing, Mumbai, Dubai, or Sydney. LA to Sydney, by the way. A flight that took me 14 hours would be accomplished in only half an hour. Starship point-to-point -point will be viable for time-critical cargo, wealthy travelers who want to minimize their travel time, and high-value transportation. 200 fully armed U.S. Marines with 80 tons of equipment in a Space Force Starship dropped wherever you want it, or 200 medical personnel with a mobile hospital in a United Nations Starship can be dropped into any disaster zone. This is the future of intercontinental transportation if all goes well. Again, thank you to Green Rabbit Rabbit and Top Secret. And thanks to everyone for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Links are in the description. We appreciate you. At Astro Proterra.